What's up guys, welcome back to Yashi. This video will be completely different than the other ones you saw until now. It's more like my old YouTube when I first actually started it, which was more about cars. Today we're gonna fix an oil leak uh, and uh, normally I would have to do the all the diagnosis, but I can tell you what I went through. I know already what is happening. The valve cover gasket of the BMW M3 is leaking. So we're seeing an oil leak from the top going to the bottom. We're losing oil. It could be risky because this engine is a lot of high pressure, so it can lose a lot of oil, which could damage the engine. I already checked online. Having BMW do this work can cost from $500 to up to $1,800. That's what you see online. And considering that I believe that I can do this in less than five hours, I believe that I, I mean, it's worth it doing it yourself because from what it seems to be, it is hard, but it's not that hard. So let's get to it. This is the thing that is leaking, as you can see here. Here it seems pretty chill. Where the leak is, is actually here in the back. And if I touch with my finger, you will see that we have some oil residue. And the way I figured this out is while I was driving and the car was getting hot, that oil will spill on the exhaust and burn and the inside cabin would smell like burnt oil. That's pretty much the diagnostics of it. That's a very common case on these engines. And we just bought the gasket right there, which is a hundred bucks. We gotta have to take this cover off first and then the actual valve cover, which is this metal piece right here. So guys, the step number one is to move, of course, this bar right here, which is to make the chassis stronger. Hey guys, the next step is to actually remove this section here that should be quite easy. It's a few of these pop-up screws just like this. One, two, three. You should be able to lift this up in theory. Of course, between the theory and the actual happening, there's a lot of difference, but this one came out quite easily. That then allows us to unscrew these Torx screws right here to remove this whole section that gives us access to all, let's say, six cylinders which in theory should come out once unscrewed just like this, right? Yep, we got it out, we got it out. Get to it. This is the thing that is leaking, as you can see here. Uh, so guys, we just exposed the full engine bay, which gives us access to all six cylinders and of course, all the valve cover access points. Now it's just a matter of taking off these tubes, unscrewing this and unscrewing these six bolts that you find right here, which should be Fairly quick, of course, between the theory and the praxis, there's a, a lot of things that could happen. And in theory, if I unscrew this guy, fuck, it should come out, in theory. Right? Oh, I don't want to lose all the freaking brackets. Okay, we got it out. I believe we officially have it out. We have it out. We have it out. Woo! Shit, that's scary. We now officially expose the, the valve cover, which is this one. It's not that. That is just uh, something that makes the engine look beautiful. It's just plastics. Now we need to unscrew all the injectors, which of course we need to remember what is what. All these electrical components. This is, I believe, the... I forget the thing uh, for emissions. And then we can unscrew all these bolts. That, by the way, the kit has gaskets for all of these. And we're gonna replace literally everything. So we'll see what happens. So guys, the way these cars come out is simply by pulling the lever up and pulling this guy out. The way it just talked about it seemed very questionable, but it's okay. See, this is out. Since I recently replaced these, it shouldn't be too hard unlike very old ones of course i don't want to film the whole thing but you get the memo there's a little clip on these things if you just push these two this guy comes out and gives you much more access that makes the whole job much much easier anyway i believe that i have to unscrew these to take the whole thing off of course which is fine because now i actually have an access point i'm gonna replace and save the 10 which i'm gonna lose anyway in the next 20 seconds because it is a classic we all know it that's why i bought 50 of them and only one is left of course we have one piece here this tiny screw be careful in not losing them and let's see if the gods of mechanics are on my side today or not of course it's super funny that this video will be 20 minutes long even though it's a five hour job for me but it's okay let's make it seem like it is super easy it's totally fine anyway we unscrew these and one two 
and screw this one and job gets much easier wow it's not how easy it's getting okay except for this one this was being hard i like this one scary scary of course you don't want to break anything okay we got this one out okay we got this guy out too we have the whole harness out which means we can now push it towards the back take there's a negative how do you call it ground that i need to unscrew first to reach that point and this is the negative that is on the side of the engine connected to the harness which now should allow me to push the harness up here let's see if it actually happens or not or whether i just lied we're gonna figure it out very soon apparently this is going up which is good it's a good start we have the entire harness here these guys should simply snatch off yep and as and just like this seems that we got it out yep we have it officially out of the way which is a good starting point point. and if you can take it out keep it out keep it out is the best thing to do keep it out of the way it doesn't bother you when you're doing any kind of work and there is a couple more cables in the back which you want to detach from the connecting harness so they keep them on the valve cover because you want full access to everything we officially have access to the entire valve cover gasket next stop is taking off these puts it under this and pulls it up and i guess it worked that was easy surprisingly wow in the history of mechanics everything seems to be working okay for now so the question is when will the chaos start happening that is the question i'm asking myself right now and even this one popped out we got all of them now should i mark them i can put them one next to the other i believe we can proceed with simply unscrewing the whole valve cover gasket hopefully everything will be fine but you never know right until you do it let's do it so guys the next step here is to remove this bolt which is a 17. keep in mind that whenever you buy the gasket kit it comes also with two tiny washers that are made of i believe copper that's what i'm looking at right here one goes on one side the other one goes on the other because we have fluid going through this tube right here so we're gonna take this one out first and then we can proceed with all these little screws right here this guy here is a screw we have of course uh, oil going through it so we need a couple of washers uh, that normally the kit gives you them now it's time to officially take off the main screws that hold the valve cover gap not the gasket i mean also the gasket but the valve cover in general the only two screws that are a little bit different are these two they also have two different gaskets keep in mind that your kit should come with the main valve cover gasket and gaskets for all the screws and the six holes for let's say the coils that's in theory that's what you should buy when you're buying the whole thing because you want to replace everything according to the mechanics you can use a power tool to unscrew the stuff not to re-screw them because you want to torque them correctly when you re-screw them of course as everything that happens in my life i don't have the correct power tool so i gotta have to do it by hand So guys, on paper we just removed everything, uh, you should just be able to rock it out. It actually is coming out. The question is, did I take everything out that I needed to take out? I have no idea. Oh uh, shit. Uh, of course. No, it's good. This is good. Of course, it's not coming out easy. I'm just gonna rock it out. Okay. And this is the valve cover. Gonna look here. So apparently you shouldn't put any of the ceiling gunk on these ceilings, and we have a good start because the valve cover doesn't literally have anything on. The question is, what about the gasket? How does the gasket look like? That's what we're gonna observe right now. I see no gunk here too, which is a very good start. The next step is of course to remove this and remove these guys that we're gonna replace with new gaskets and i believe we can go on from there and the point that was leaking was 
back here because if I touch it, I see that it's nice and slippery, which is fine. Yep, that's where it's nice and slippery. And if you look clearly, you can see between the side that was not leaking and the side that actually was leaking, nice and shiny, full of oil. So guys, this is something that people say no, some people say yes. Apparently these ones do not require sealant. Do I want to put some? I don't know, I feel like I should just follow what they say and not put anything. And it should be dry, applied dry, apparently. That's what I saw. I might be wrong, but that's what I read. Let's see if it works. If not, I'm gonna have to do it again. Okay, guys, we simply applied the has gasket back in. There are a couple of points where it literally fits in snugly to align the whole thing. Now, the question is, if I put on valve cover on top of the valve cover gasket, will it still fit the snug? That is the big question mark I ask in myself. Another thing I have to do is replace all of these that came with the kit, which you will see now. And the question is, will it fit snug? Woo. Nice and snugly. If it would fit, it would be easier, of course. It doesn't because there's plenty of cables in the back that we want out. First. Before pull, ah, I just hit my hand very badly, which is fine. The question is, are we snug on all of this? And it seems like we might be snug. Yeah, I see no real issues here. No real issues here. We seem to be pretty aligned, which is a good start. And let's see if we can finish. And of course, all these gaskets that we use to then put in the screws back in, we also replace them. They come with a kit and I mean, these look good, but I'm still going to replace them. So guys, we officially remounted these. I still have to torque them. Of course, you have to torque them depending on your model year. Always double check your owner's manual what it says or online. Uh, I don't have the torque uh, wrench, so I'm waiting for that one. With that said, I'm already starting to remount everything. Keep in mind, always remember, this guy, there's a tube here with oil where we removed this big screw. You need to add the two washers that came with the kit, replace them always whenever you unscrew this one and put it back in or you're just gonna have another oil leak. So guys, everything is bolted back on. I closed the hood here nice and chill. I gotta buy a torque wrench, so I cannot finish the job. I might gonna finish it in the next video. You're gonna see me turn the car on. But for now, I believe that we didn't leave any bolts behind, so job completed.